So here I am setting off for a hiking and kayaking trip to the Isle of Anglesey. And for once, there are no cars parked in front of my drive. However, I still managed to bump the base camp over the kerb. Every day is a school day. I'm staying at the Roseboth certified location just outside Benthlech on the Isle of Anglesey. There are five superb, fully serviced, hard standing pitches. Roseboth is actually a bed and breakfast just outside the village of Benthlech and the certified location is in the grounds behind the bed and breakfast. There is a shower block on site for the CL. I don't personally use shower blocks. However, on investigation, I find the shower is absolutely spotless. The location of the Roastboth CL is perfect. It's a stone's throw from the Welsh coast path and a couple of minutes from Bentleck Beach. When I arrived on site, with there being nobody else about, I did practice my reversing skills. Now it took several attempts, but I did eventually reverse the base camp to the spot that I wanted it in. During my time at Roastboth TL, the pitches did fill up. However, the location felt very spacious. Right, I'm all set up on this lovely little CO. I have made a couple of additions since we were last out, about four or five weeks ago. First one, in the gas locker, I've actually fitted a propane high-low valve. So it's given me a good reading of how much is in the propane tank. But also it's a safety valve as well, so if there's a leak, in the base camp and the pressure this valve picks it up and shuts off the gas at that point so that's pretty good and also around on the awning so i've got the usual camper domestic camper 200 awning this awning has taken a pound in over the winter it's been absolutely brilliant but i have actually fitted the storm straps as you can see I fitted the storm straps to it. The um, the guidelines, I've taken them off. They were getting a bit of a bound, bit of a pounding in the high winds. So, yeah, really, really pleased with that awning. It's brilliant. Okay, so we're all set off. I'm ready to go off on our first walk. I'm just about to um, set off from the sea out. So here, where this blue dot is, and I had actually planned a 10 mile out and return via Mulfrey to Ligwy Beach but because it's a bit late in the day I'm just going to go to the headland of Mulfrey there and back which will be about a six mile out and return seven mile maximum should take us a couple of hours so we'll get back about four or five o'clock at the latest um, just before it starts going dark a little bit of housekeeping before I go out so on the whale water heater I'm going to leave the hot water on uh, so it's nice and hot when I get back for a shower I'm leaving the heating on low and just about half setting just to keep a bit of a base heat in the in the base camp but the most important thing i'm going to do on the swift command is i'm going to turn the pump off and the reason i turn the pump off is that if the, the base camp springs a leak which caravans can do then i could end up with 40 liters of uh, acarol in the in the base camp which i don't want so they're, they're just a couple of bits of housekeeping before i set off so we're expecting quite a bit of rain today and tomorrow and we're going to be hiking on the the north Wales coast path around anglesey so we're going to be getting muddy pools so I've brought the deep clean shampoo, which is brilliant. And I'll use the exterior shower on the base camp to wash the pores when we get in. So I'm sorry, dog. It just has to be done, darling. A couple of minutes walk from the CL site and we're already on the Welsh coast path of Anglesey. And the views do not disappoint all the way around. And the mind begins to wonder what it would be like to own a property in a location such as this. One thing I admire about the Welsh coast path are these benches that are situated along the path, always at a location where there is a most beautiful view.
and as we continue along on our journey and cross deserted beaches and through fields of newly born lambs we soon reach our destination for this walk which is Mulfrey. And we get to see the RNLI lifeboat station at Mulfrey, an active life station with a crew of six to seven people. When I get back to the base camp, there are four very muddy pools. So I use the external shower point on the base camp to give her a good clean up. So here we are, first evening in the base camp. Dog's absolutely knackered after that walk as am I. So I'm just preparing tea. My wife's made me a vegetable chilli which I'm just heating up and then in the oven, if you can see that, but I've got a, um, a bread, a baked bread in there to go with it. Good morning and after a fantastic sleep in the base camp, look what's been delivered by the B&B. A full cooked breakfast, cost £10 worth every penny, can't wait to eat that. And the walk in the dog. So we are well and truly confined to barracks this morning. So I'm going to nip to the nearest village, Benklech, and pick up some supplies for the base camp. I dive into the local co-op to pick up some supplies and then take the dog for a soggy walk on Bentleck Beach. But even on a grey, wet and rainy morning, it's still absolutely beautiful there. And the dog didn't mind getting a little bit wet. I then return to the base camp and take the opportunity to catch up on the inbox before heading out hiking in the afternoon. Well, it's finally stopped raining. So the plan for this afternoon is the dog and I are going to head over to the northwest point of Anglesey, the Isle of Anglesey, to a to a quite a dramatic coastline called Inisifacton. I think that's how, how it's pronounced. Dusky Camaragadui. Um, so I had originally planned a 10 mile hike from Innisifactin to Kemlin Bay, but because the morning's been robbed by the rain, I'll just go there and do some hiking a few miles along the headline and come back. When we arrive at Innisifactin, we find the location deserted and the views which were revealed outrageously stunning. The landscapes here are very dramatic. What a beautiful and peaceful spot. But it's when we take a look from the sky that we really can see what an oasis in a sea factor is. A sandy beach surrounded by the rocky and dramatic coastline of Anglesey. As we explore the headland further, we find some interesting and long ago abandoned structures and also a variety of deep cut caverns in the Anglesey cliff faces. But it's when we return to the base camp that we're greeted with a sunset putting a fire in the sky behind the base camp. So it's dinner time. Let's have a look what we've got. I'm just preheating a stew that my wife has uh, made for me. A beef stew which is going to taste amazing and then in the oven I've just put in another crusty bread so that should be ready in about another 10 minutes or so it's the morning of our last full day on the island 
and the plan today is to go kayaking. But first, I return to Bentlecht Beach to give the dog a good run around. And then later that day, I head to the northeast of the island to Porthelion to meet a colleague and good friend of mine who has a property on the island and we waste no time getting suited up. And we are quickly heading down to the water's edge to spend the rest of the afternoon paddling and exploring Anglesey's coastline. I spend my last evening enjoying the delights of the Adelphi pub in Amluk. The pub is located at the entrance to the working harbour of Amluk. As the sun begins to rise on my final morning, I reflect on what a fantastic sea owl the roast both is. A five minute hike to the North Wales coast path and a five minute drive onto Benthlech beach and also situated on the A5025 for direct routes around the island. And that brings to an end another excellent base camp adventure. I'm already looking forward to the next one and thanks for watching.